Please welcome Blitz Bazaule. <laughs> You, sir? How are you doing, sir? I'm fantastic. This is so good to have you here because, you know, there are few people in the world who can say that they have people like Oprah Winfrey and Beyonce as their fans. Few? None. Maybe you. <laughs> Maybe you. <laughs> Let, let's, let's, let's start with this, with this idea. I mean, you know, people have seen your work, even if they don't know you, if they don't know your name. You, you do so many different things. You know, you're nominated for a Grammy for co-directing Black is King, right? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. You're also now creating the musical adaptation of The Color Purple. Absolutely. And all of this and your journey begins in Ghana. I'm always fascinated as an African. Yeah. How, how does that journey begin? How does it get you to this point here? Well, first, no African has one job. We know that. <laughs> You know, you got to do them all, you got to do it all. And, um, you know, I've always been enamored by storytelling. That's, for me, is the beginning. I grew up um, with a grandmother that told stories. Right. They were incredible. They were always visual. Um, I call it the HBO Showtime, Netflix of its time. <laughs> and, and the beauty of that was they were imaginative. Mm. So I grew understanding that stories could be nonlinear, they could be, they're powerful tools um, for the imagination. Right. And so over time, for me, that's just been it. It's just chasing this idea of storytelling, understanding that stories bring us together, understanding, especially as a continent, where stories are so few and far between and so few people know about our stories, I found that having to do it in multiple mediums mm -hmm. allows me to tell more of the same exact story. I, I love that you've done that across multiple mediums because, you, you know, you don't just direct and you don't just, uh, you know, produce and create movies. You, you also are, are a rapper. I do. You have, like, four self-released albums, I right? Do. right? I do. You, you, I do. And now a novel a to novel. throw into the mix. Absolutely. What, what, what's happening? You just, you're just winning so hard and then you, you get bored no. and you move on to the next thing? <laughs> Like, explain, like, not many people would think that they can write the book, and then not many people would write a book that is getting the reviews your book is getting. Indeed. I mean, I, I really... Look, it was COVID. <laughs> it was COVID. Okay. It was COVID. I'll take it. <laughs> everyone, else was, everyone else was baking bread. You were writing a book. It's, it's a fantastic book as well. Thank you. you know, and the, and the premise to your points of stories is beautiful. I won't give away all of the details, but essentially it's the story of a couple in the 60s, a black couple in the yes. 60s living in America who escape... Yes to Africa, yes. and, you know, a whole journey unfolds. Yes. Now, what I loved is that it's set in the 60s, yes. and we know the civil rights movement, and we know all the stories in and around that time, but it feels strangely like it could be set today as well. Absolutely. You know? Just people Abs going like, America, I'm not sure, I need to go to Africa. Absolutely, and, <laughs> and, it, and it's, it's been an ongoing thing. And, uh -huh. and for me, what it is is also about expectation. You know, I have a lot of friends who say they want to go to Africa, yes. and they go and they go, Oh, this is this is the real Africa, <laughs> and and it's real. It's yes. very real to them. And I I find that ultimately, um, I also have friends who want to come to America. Yes. And you know that you're told there, you know, there are no homeless people. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. no attempted coup d'etats, mm -hmm. you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then and then you arrive and you go, oh wait, uh, that happens here too. Right. And so the expectation back and forth for me has been one of the most interesting juxtapositions of this book. And whether it's now, whether it's then. I think the story's still the same. We're all longing for a home that we hope will be better than the one we're in. I love that. Wow, yeah. I really love that. I also, I also enjoy how, you know, how, how real you made the story. This, this is, if I'm not mistaken, this, this has already been bought to be turned into a series, correct? Absolutely. This is, this is wild because, you know, most of the time, most of the time, the book has to be out. Yes. And then people were like, oh, we need to make this into a movie or a yeah. TV series. And then yeah. you wrote the book, and then there was a bidding war, and people were like, we want the book, we want the book, we want the book. Yes. How did they even know what was in the book? Did they know? Or did they just know you? And then they were like, we'll take it, we'll take it, Bliss. <laughs> I would love that. Okay, okay. Yeah, that okay. was so, the so they read. They had to read okay, it. Okay, got yes, it, got it, got it. To. So now, here's, here's a question I have. Everyone says the same thing about everything. Oh, the book was always better. The book is better, the book is better. How are you going to make sure that the book isn't just better. How do you make sure that the series, you know, holds a candle to the book? Absolutely. I mean, I think first, you know, shout out to Yaya Abdul-Mateen, who's going to be starring in, in, in the show. Um, I mean, it's, it's, 
it's really going to be a fantastic um, exploration because one thing I found about writing is mm -hmm. that you can create these multiple layers and backstory in ways that you probably couldn't in television. But in television and or film, you've got a visual medium in which you can tell nonverbal storytelling. Right, so you can right. show people as opposed to tell them. And so I feel like I'm, I have the best of both worlds because I can go in here whenever I need it, but I also have the visual to tell the story. So, I love that. Yeah. So, so you're gonna be working on um, the adaptation, the, the musical is, yes. what, what's, the, what's the process with that right now? Because you know, The Color Purple is one of those stories that is really held in high esteem in the Absolutely. United States. It's such an important story. It's, you know, it's multi-generational. You're going to be redoing it as a musical, yes. which, which is particularly interesting. Yes. How, do you, how do you capture the essence of something whilst also bringing in elements of the new and then making sure that the worlds merge together? How you did it. What? How you did it. I, I didn't make the color purple. No, no, no. <laughs> I think you're confusing I mean, me with Steven Spielberg. No, no. That's, that's how, there are a lot of people tell me that on this side. Like, <laughs> Steven Spielberg, then I turn it like, sorry. No, I, that, yeah. I, mean, I mean, The Daily Show. I mean, you, it's what you did. And I have to be honest, it's such an inspiration. You know, when I, <laughs> seriously, Thank you, Thank seriously. You. When I got this job, when I got this job, you were one of the first people I thought about, which is how do you take something that is classic? How do you take something that people love and make it your own? And, and you did that. And so, in going into the color purple, which we just wrapped, by the way. Um, yes, congrats, fantastic. Um, shout out to Steven Spielberg and, and Oprah for the support and love, and mm -hmm. the Warner Brothers family for the love. But they really allowed me to make this my own. And, and they allowed me to, to, to experiment. They allowed me to give Celia an imagination. They allowed me to do things that I think um, elevate the story mm -hmm. and, and, and make it something that's modern and something that still holds uh, its foundations together. And so also Alice Walker's amazing text, which is the original inspiration for yeah, all of this. Yeah. Very, very lucky. I think very we're lucky, lucky because we, we're gonna be the ones who experience you know, how you put the work together. I, I, I find myself intrigued with a lot of the work you create because you can tell that you know, Ghana and Africa as a whole have an indelible impression on how you think and how you apply your mind to the projects that you're working on. You see this in the book, and I, I loved how you did it. You tell a story about people who are connected by so many things and yet have so many things that actually make them different. You know, yes. particularly an African-American couple going yes. to Africa and going, this is our home, yep. and then realizing oh, it's not, but it is, yep. and, and there are things that are different. And how, did you, how did you tackle that sensitively? Because what I felt reading the book was, wow, we are the people. Absolutely. But we can also celebrate the fact that new cultures have emerged and new ideas have spread across the, you know, from generation to generation. How did you, how did you capture that? And do you do it on purpose or is it just innate? I mean, it's, it's, it's on purpose. I mean, the fact that I grew up in Ghana through high school, I went to Achimota Secondary School, which is fantastic school, produced presidents. Okay. I'm, I'm lucky to be from that school. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and, um, and, but, but the beauty there was that I've, I've been able to really never let go of you know, that early, those early years of my life, got it, got which it. then, you know, spending as much time as I have now in the U US, mm -hmm. it's kind of found a way to kind of all coagulesce as one thing, ah. which, now, which now is kind of the, the, the mirror through which I, I am, or the vessel through which I've made music. It's the same, it was like taking, you know, Public Enemy yes. and mixing it with Fela Kuti, which, which you know, I, you know I, now you got, Afro beats and everybody knows it, but right. 10 years ago, it was... That idea was, it was wild. It was wild. It was, it was Kanan, it was myself. It was uh -huh. very few uh -huh. people who were, who were attempting to do this. And I think it's all about this double consciousness where you kind of zigzag through these worlds where you know that you're never quite either because they both become one thing. Mm. And, 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 and that's how these characters find themselves. They find themselves constantly wrestling with identity um, who am I, you know, uh, uh, where, where am I going mm -hmm. and, and, and what world do I belong ultimately? Is it where you are? Is it where you were born? Is it, is it where, you're, where you're going next? Mm. And that's kind of what I, I find, I personally wrestled with that myself um, and many, many immigrants do. Um, and so that's kind of how I, I, I filter all that through into this book. You've done an amazing job. It's going to be an so, amazing show. Thank and you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Such a pleasure. I appreciate Such you. A pleasure. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah.
The scent of burnt flowers is available now. Let's buzz a wool, everybody.